Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Ray Bearer, chapters 18, 19, 20, and 21. Just checking in, Rashawn. You read I, through chapter 21, I right? I did. I okay. did. I did, kids. <laughs> just, just making sure. Yeah, you were right to ask. <laughs> In these chapters, we get a perilous journey through the bush, but it's not perilous for the reasons the bush usually is perilous. Okay. And then Tarasai takes a bath and gets her hair done or undone. Welcome to Unspoiled. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. All right. So we have got some some weird, wacky, wild stuff happening in the bush that I didn't like. I never like when we've got illusion magic and things <laughs> that prey on your worst fears and dreams. I hate it. And I hated this. And I, I, I want to know how you felt about it. I loved it. All of this. I'm shocked. I love shocked. I all you. of this. I really did. I really, really did. Uh, I just want to say, just from the gate, I loved that because. So, what I think of when I think of the African bush, you know, mm-hmm. I think of all of the messaging I've received in my lifetime from everywhere, right? Whether it's pop culture books, movies, what you know, journalism. It's this dark, ominous, scary, savage, unsafe place, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and the bush here in the book is those things, but not, it doesn't feel like for the same reasons. Definitely you not, know, yeah. She took this idea of how perilous this journey would be through through this, but infused like all this magic into it and and sort of like um how dare I even say wonder? <laughs> you know, like we got we got like they call them you know, we had heard about the sprites before, the little toot toot flies, or I don't know if I'm saying that right, but but they're basically like little fae, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. They're little, they're little fairies. Yeah, and they have I, a very like toot toot sort of vibe mm-hmm. to them. And um, I know that there is a there is a fly. Uh, I think it's spelled T S E T S E. There's a fly. Okay. Uh, um, and so when she talks about these sprites, it makes me think of like that the little. I don't think I'm saying it right, but those type of flies. But um, that are like, I don't know what African language that they're called that. But um, but I'm anyway, it up. Go ahead. But but it feels like that's a little bit where she's coming at. And then also she did this really fun thing where she's even describing the bush, and she says that um. Oh God! Oh oh! I hate these. Did you look it up? Yes. I didn't, I didn't mean for you to look up images. I just wanted you to look up the word. Oh God! <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, they they um. Drink maybe, your blood. I think I know about them because they maybe transmit malaria or something. Maybe they're maybe yeah. okay. Yeah, that would but be, I clicked away, so I don't. Yeah. I won't tell you any but, further because I'm not going back to that horror yeah. show. But when uh, when she's talking to uh, one of the um, anointed honors that's from um, the northern parts, I think her name is Teresa or Teresi or Teresa Teresa. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're saying Terracy and it sounds so close to Tarasai. And I'm like, right. you don't mean Tarasai. Yeah, yeah I don't though. mean Tarasai. Her name is spelled like T H E R E S E, but she's from Nantes. Oh, um, Terese. 
I so, think is how she says it in the audiobook. She does her her people call God damn it, where is it? Her people call the bush true de fay. Okay. And I was just like, oh, see? They're little fairies. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, I just really, really like that she kind of flipped our expectation of the bush into something that is that is dangerous but also filled with magic and possibility, yeah. you know, um, and that it's dangerous not because of the humans that are there, mm-hmm. but because there's these sort of trapped souls, you know, yeah, that live there and try to, you know, trick and trap other people. I thought it was fascinating, this, this whole illusion magic where, like, I knew that wasn't G immediately. Oh, right? yeah. 100%. Like, you know, you know, that's not him. Even yep. though, even though you want it to be, you want it to be like, oh, he's just suddenly forgiven her. But you, but your brain is like, that makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. This is a yeah. fucking trap. What is going on? And, and she went for like an hour and I was really mad. I'm like, why are you still walking for an hour? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um. But yeah, I did. I I loved I loved their little travel through the bush, and then them actually getting to these two other towns was really cool to see. Um, we except for see, some shit that's going on there. Well, we which get, we will get into right. We get to see the what the edict looks like in practice, which is mm-hmm. always very different than what it sounds like in theory. When you're mm-hmm. sitting in your fancy room making your plans. You know, it sounds all great, but on the ground, that shit looked like fascism. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I, so, yeah. But all right. But to the beginning. <laughs> all right. So we start chapter 18. Dawn broke and we washed the blood from our clothes. And they're keeping everything as like separate from everybody as possible, because even though Dio has been healed quite a bit, it's still very obvious this is a stab wound. And if they try and pass it off as an accident, nobody's going to buy it. So they have to wait a little bit longer and give Kira some more time. Did you see the amazing illustration I used for Kira for the last episode that I posted? I don't know. I can't remember the artist's name. I I credited her in the, um, the the text for the episode, the show notes. And uh, I got it from Jordan Ifueco's Instagram. Ooh. Um, but it was such a beautiful God. illustration. I'm looking at it right now. And she looks like she's in the middle of singing. Oh. Like her hands are raised and I was just obsessed with this it. This is gorgeous. Isn't that so pretty? Oh. That is stunning. I love all of these characters so much, you guys, already. Mm -hmm. It is wild how much I love them and how attached I am to all of them. Yeah. uh, Already. Um, So, yeah. So, Kira is – they also have to, like, keep all the healers away. Um, Yeah. You don't want forensics coming in and starting to poke and prod and figure (laughs) things out. Mm, Um, The angle of this looks like it couldn't have been self-inflicted. There's a there's a wonderful little line that she mentions that um, Thaddeus and Mbali didn't even bother mentioning to the emperor that there was an injury because it can't. How serious can it be? You know, Thaddeus can't be killed. It's all fine. Yep. So I so I like that that was included because it was just a reminder and I didn't want like part of my brain being like, huh, it's weird that you would think the palace would be more concerned about this injury that he had. So I was glad that she just addressed it in a very simple way. Like, yeah, no, it yeah. didn't need to be a makeup. You know, we're not making a big deal about it because no one thinks that his life is in danger. They're fussing over him, but they're fussing in the way that you do when you know something isn't dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of like, oh, baby. <laughs> um, so Sanji comes to get her and she has like been packing and really struggling with some of the things that she wants to bring with her that don't feel appropriate. Um, a lot of things made by villagers who like worship her in a way that feels really uncool at this yeah, point with yeah. everything. She does not feel like carrying those stories because she doesn't feel like she's worthy of it. Yeah. Um, and then she's got all this like fancy clothes and shit, mm-hmm. you know, that wouldn't be appropriate for the journey. Cause she's been living in the palace, you know, yeah. chilling for a while. And then there's even a moment where she's like, I got all these scrolls. Girl, don't, don't take don't the, bring scrolls. the fucking scrolls, man. Look, I have been on vacation 
and brought reading material so many times. <laughs> and I only ever read the one book. I bring all this stuff. Like I'm going to go through all of these different things. No, you know what I do? I read the one book and I play my Nintendo switch. That's what I do. And all of this other stuff. One time Owen and I went on a camping trip. He brought an entire box of comics, like one of those long <laughs> boxes and it was so heavy and this bitch did not even touch a single comic in that box <laughs> that whole time. It did not happen. So just from I, me to you, those of you who are, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to be out there arguing with me. I always read my, shut up. Sure. I don't care. I love how packing is like 90% aspirational. A hundred percent. But then I packed like all of these like clothes for cool weather and we were on our little camping or our cabin thing. Bitch, it was like 75 degrees, 80 <laughs> degrees. And I had nothing to wear because everything was sweaters and long leggings and fleece. I didn't even have like, I, I, I had to wear this one dress that I didn't even have like the right shoes to go with it if I oh. wasn't wearing stockings, like oh, thick no. tights. So I just had to wear them bare legged, <laughs> but with boots. Oh, and no. it was like, I didn't have the right socks. So I just had my bare feet in boots. You know how awkward that feels? I do. It just feels like my foot shouldn't be bare in here. This is like uh, nasty. There's something about it that feels like yeah, you cannot wear walking boots. barefoot in like a dorm bathroom. You don't <laughs> do it, you know? Mm -mm. When I went uh, out of town uh, for my birthday, I was only gone two nights. Left on a Friday, came home on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I stayed at a hotel that had an outdoor pool, and it is, you know, February, so I knew mm -hmm. that shit's closed. I still packed a bathing suit. Listen, I'm not mad at you for that. Why did I pack you don't a know. bathing suit? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what could have happened. There's all kinds of, you know what I'm saying? Like... Like, I went to visit when Bitches and Money had me come to L.A. I didn't pack a bathing suit because it didn't even occur to me. Mm. And there was this amazing pool. And I wound up having to wear a black bra and black shapewear as a bathing suit the oh, whole time. I mean. And it looked hot. Honestly, I look good. Yeah. But <laughs> that shapewear was never the same. I had to toss it because that <laughs> chlorine really did a number on it. Um. Anyway. Okay. So. Sanji comes to get her and he's got Imperial Guard uniforms. Yeah. And um Oh, we should mention she has removed the anklet that he gave her. Yes. Because she is not worthy to wear that anymore either. And so when he comes to get her, she's just like, here. <laughs> and when she's like, So why wouldn't why shouldn't we draw peasant clothes? And he's like, Well, if the lady's watching then she'll be more likely to spot us. And if she knows her weapon's been compromised, she may try to retrieve it. Yeah. And she says, weapon, is that my name? And he says, it's always been your name. And I was like, yeah. sir, you need to stop. Yeah. That with was this hard to fucking read. Yep. That was like, I mean, granted it's the next day after a shocking turn of events. You know, I, I get it. But damn, dude. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Shit is cold blooded. It really is, right? <laughs> so <laughs> she so Terrasai is like, oh, okay, word, I'm the weapon. And then she's like leans into it. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole time she's just like, I'm being really like I'm being really nasty. I'm being really difficult. But she's just like, Oh, if I'm a weapon, I should be behind you. Oh, you wanna you wanna pat me down? I'm a weapon. You wanna make sure I don't have me? <laughs> she gives him that anklet back and he has this complicated expression and I'm like, why? Why though? What's complicated? I thought it was all real fucking simple, Jeet. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, uh <laughs> Yeah. It is just she says, I had no right to be petty about his coldness, but I couldn't yes, you bear do. it. I You do. You do. Yeah. I'm sorry. Look, there is a few things that are said in these chapters that I was like, just in total disagreement. Mm. And this, I had no right. I'm like, yeah, you do. I'm sorry. You were like programmed to do something and forced by magic to drink a thing to restore memories that you tried to get rid of because you knew they were going to make you do something fucked up. Right. That was how much you didn't want to do the thing. Yeah. So for me... It's just not even a question. And then later on, there's a, a thing with Sanji telling her, 
you have nothing to apologize for or you have nothing to feel guilty about. And the way that she says, oh, I know it's not you because Sanji would never lie to me. And I thought that was fucked up. Like, mm. that doesn't feel like he's lying. It feels like, I mean, I, I, she, she says at one point, it felt like I was doing the right thing in that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. But that's not the same thing as having control over yourself and right. making a choice. Yeah. You know? Yeah, she's trying to express to him. Because when he's like, oh, you didn't, you know, you did this thing, but you didn't want to do it. And you wouldn't have done it if she hadn't, like, pulled your strings. She's mm -hmm. like, no, but it felt right. It's like she's trying to express to him and maybe understand herself exactly how much of her mother's wish is in her. Mm. Like, how much of it is her mother and, like, where does she start and end? Yeah. And when she talks about how it, it felt right, it's like, it's almost like she's she's afraid because she expected that being compelled to do a thing the part that's really her would be in revolt against it. You know, I see what you mean. But instead of having that like revulsion that I did the thing, it felt right, which has mm -hmm. got to be like really terrifying for her because now she's like, well, shit, it, it felt right. Maybe, maybe that is me, you know? Um, but yeah, I agree that when she says that, you know, he would never lie to me. <laughs> I, I was torn on that. I agree with you that I don't think it's a lie, but I but I think I understand her thinking that Sanji wouldn't say that to her. Oh, I definitely think Sanji wouldn't say it, but her like characterizing it as a lie to make me feel better. Oh, gotcha. Which is the way she words it. I gotcha. was like Mm -hmm. gotcha. that doesn't really feel like what yeah. that was but um yeah. this is such a tricky thing too you know like if we could take away the magic for just a second and maybe it's not fair like because that's I'm real, gonna be our it, fucking slogan <laughs> if we could take away the magic for just a second and you can take that in any way you want and yes that is how we mean it um, I know a big part of the story so far, at least it seems, is that there is this sort of immovable thing that's been placed inside of her that she doesn't have any control over and it mm -hmm. can compel her and that her mother or the lady can pull her strings and all that kind of stuff. And we understand that this is about magic and that's how it works. And so I think I've been reading this and I, I am comfortable with it, even if it turns out I was wrong where I don't really hold Terasai responsible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for any of this, right? But it got me to thinking, especially because the story is so wild, because the person that's putting this into her is who she considers her mother, uh, you know. that right. I'm, I'm assuming that it's li really her mother, but there could be a, a wacky twist I don't know about coming. True. But, so when you think about what our parents put in us, Mm -hmm. You know, ideas and ideologies and, and biases and all that other kind of shit that we then act on as we grow into adulthood. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize that it's really been placed there. We don't like we think it's our own shit. We think we came to these decisions on our own because we're so fucking smart. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that a lot of it was placed when we were very young. It's got me thinking about how we separate ourselves from who our parents want us to be, mm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and how not everybody manages that separation. Like a lot of people don't, you know, yep. a lot of people don't even bother trying. Some people try, but it doesn't, you know, the odds are stacked against them for whatever reason, mm -hmm. either, either the, what they would lose was too great and they're not risk losing it or their life is too comfortable or the privilege or, you know, all the mm -hmm. things that keep people doing the dumb shit their parents raised them to do. And I don't know, it just, just, just got me thinking about what that is like, uh, feeling like the very people that put you on this earth have, have put like a seed of poison in you. Yeah. And you grow up 
trying to figure out how to like be your own person separate from this thing that they planted in you mm-hmm. and how, how difficult that is. And I think both of us have watched some people that we love very much go through that struggle, mm-hmm. you know, and how messy it, it has been for some people Yep, and how some people don't make it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just got me thinking about that. That's been on my mind a lot, especially like, you know, Nording, knowing that Jordan Ifueko has immigrant parents and I was just wondering how much that plays into because like f- as somebody who had one parent who was an immigrant I know how many hopes of his were on me as an only child also mm. of his who was you know native Amer like born in America I was about to say native America <laughs> I, was like, uh, I was like not what I meant where is that going <laughs> born in America um <laughs> But there's just like a lot of pressure to not squander opportunities that you got that they aren't, they didn't get. Mm -hmm. And yet the very reason that they can appreciate the opportunities you're getting is because they didn't have them and they were kept from things. And that means that you will never really appreciate them the same way. Mm -hmm. And the only way you could is if you were put through the same hardships as them, which is exactly what they don't want. Right. So they want you simultaneously to have the same depth of understanding without the simultaneous yep. experience yep. required for the understanding. And that has just got yep. to be a really difficult thing and to like figure out. There, and I don't, you know, my, don't have immigrant parents, but I've heard from friends and read that sometimes a certain amount of resentment accompanies that from the parent definitely you know yeah uh resenting that you didn't have the same hardships or treating mm-hmm. you like you just don't appreciate how good you have it versus Very how much they so. had it you know what a yep. fucking mind game to play that was definitely child. like my dad's thing was how lazy i was growing up because i like slept in and i didn't even, i wasn't even like a sleep in that late kind of kid because i have always been a, i want to be doing stuff always but in comparison to what he thought i should be doing Mm -hmm. and i took it really really personally because i am an overachiever by nature anyway so i was like what the fuck i know i push myself more than the other kids at my school for the most part what more do you want and then i grew up i left my dad got remarried and she had a teenage son and i saw him doing the same if not worse to the teenage son and just Mm. like lamenting how this kid takes everything for granted and he's so lazy and he doesn't have a job and he doesn't do that. And it's like, the kid is still in high school at Hmm. 18. He doesn't have a job. Like, look, I get it. A lot of kids in high school have jobs, but like a lot don't, a lot lot can't. Mm -hmm. And I had a job for like half a year and my grades plummeted. And so they made me stop because so like, what do you, you know, what do you want? Yeah. And yeah. uh, I just, I, I think my father is like responsible in large part for my constant sense of needing to be productive mm. and needing to like justify why I'm worth spending money for groceries on or just like m- having space in the world, you know? Probably. And uh, I can't imagine what it's like to have two parents coming from that background because my mother was very disadvantaged and so I still had pressure on her in that sense of her being like, I never went to college either. So you'll be the first of my family to do this, but it wasn't really the same. Right. She still had a much more like American viewpoint of just like, well, yeah, work hard, but also right. life is supposed to be enjoyed. You right. know? There's a, there's a, an American, you know, I don't know if it exists anymore. We can't, we couldn't sustain it, but we still have the mythology around it where here we tell ourselves that our parents expect their children to do and be better and have better than that they had. Mm -hmm. Right. So an American parent will like, look at the kid that's going to college and be like, yeah, I'm really happy that you're going to be the first in college and you're going to have this such better life than I was able to have. And that's Mm -hmm. great. Where someone from a different experience might be like, yeah, you're going to college. Goddamn right. That's mm-hmm. the least you can do. You see how hard we work to get here and get you there? You guys, exactly. you know what I mean? It's like yep. it's just a different energy. <laughs> yep, very much so. 
Yeah. So I just, uh, I wonder how much that influences her character of Tari Sai, who is so like, it's more than just that she has pressure on her to do a certain thing. She is literally being used as a vessel mm -hmm. to extend her mother's power mm -hmm. in a way that's like a puppet. And that yeah. is creepy as hell. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. So, um, <laughs> um, after G pats her down, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much, but she just being so petty. And I just enjoyed it a little bit more than maybe <laughs> I should have. <laughs> um, but he's being really, really cold to her and uh it they're going to travel. Um they're trying to figure out how to get back to uh she's from Swana. Mm -hmm. And uh they decide they're gonna go by Lodestone. Um, because it's just more efficient, even though it sounds like a really terrible, difficult way to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the very first time we saw the lodestones, how like similar to like Port Key, yeah, traveling it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do the lodestone, and the first place they get is uh, is it Co Co Corey? I do not oh. know how to say that. Um, I'm trying to find the spot where you're at because we're well, first. We I wanted to talk about the bush. Yeah, I jumped and, ahead. The first thing they do is walk to the bush. Yeah, yeah, I jumped ahead to the lodestone. Um, and there's talk about this creeped me out so bad. <laughs> to mortals, bushland appeared no different than any other savanna or forest. <laughs> A goat herd could wander from pasture to bush pasture without knowing it. Animals were better at sensing the difference, though plenty of cattle, lured by the smell of seductively sweet grass, had vanished overnight. The poor beasts emerged from the bush several days later, half-starved and eyes white with madness, with fewer limbs, or sometimes more, than they had entered with. And I was like, word? I don't like that. It's one thing to just cut a limb off. It's another thing to be ad naman. All I could think of was the fucking goat herder, herder being like, God damn it. This motherfucker got six limbs again. The fuck? I told you. <laughs> Jogging towards you with his useless legs bouncing off the sides. Oh my God. I could see though that might be an advantage. You butcher that animal and you got six goat legs like, to sell now. Right? Maybe that's like, all right. It's like a low key that's a come up. I, mean. mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know though. Maybe the madness poisons the meat. Yeah. I, I Between me and you, I don't think you want to eat any, any bush goat. <laughs> bush goat. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that. My apologies to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my regret. god! Same, same, same. Okay. Um, um, they're also being escorted to the bush by a little uh, by this imperial guard that they're with, mm -hmm. and it's the the captain is a woman named Captain uh, Bunmi or Boonmi. Um, Boonmi is how and she says it. Yeah, Boonmi. And yeah. Uh, I just really like that the captain was a woman. It like doesn't really mean anything anywhere in a, in a grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. it. Was a choice that she decided to make the captain a woman, and I appreciated it. Can I just say how ingrained the patriarchy is? Because I read Captain and immediately think dude, and then you tell me it's a woman and it's an adjustment. <laughs> I, it's still like that with so many words. I'll realize like <laughs> there was some sleep story I was listening to the other night and they were like, the conductor got up and, and blew her whistle. And I was like, what? Oh, okay. But it was like a real moment. And I just mm -hmm. really, every time I'm reminded that I'm still brainwashed, I'm so depressed by it. Listen. <laughs> it is. It would be the one thing if, like, the brainwashing stopped, but it never stops. It never stops. It's just so, fucking in there. Like, so we, you know, it's not like, oh, I learned better in sixth grade. I'm still falling for the banana and the tailpipe. No, they're literally all day, every day, still trying to convince you <laughs> that Captain should automatically mean man. <laughs> so. That whole fucking. The doctor said, I can't operate. That's my son. Who was that? I fucking failed that basic test. I remember when somebody asked me that riddle and I fucking didn't Did do you? it, guys. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I was like 14. 
Oh, I was okay. old enough that I should have known. Uh, I was like, like, you see the hand wave? I was going to give you a pass. Mm-mm. Like, oh, 14. Mm-mm. I should have known. And when I when they said it was his mother, I got the fucking, like, the wire, <laughs> what's his name, look of just, I, like, simultaneous... I'm my my mind is blown and I know I fucked up kind of expression. You know what I mean? Just like, oh, that's embarrassing. I love Shorty somebody. was a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I love so much that you're just like gonna just share that with the world. Because it's, I mean, because we do. Like, it's just wild how that shit just sneaks up on you. Mm-hmm. You know, you think you're past it and you're more enlightened and then Without even realizing it, you're you're making connections and assumptions based on, you know, job descriptions. Yep. You don't even realize you've done it. Yep. It's wild to me that people will just out act like they don't have that happening. Like, come on. Come on. Stop it. Yeah. What are you? Yeah. We're, we're all friends here. Just yeah. fucking just own it. Own it. <laughs> we bay. That's his fucking name. God oh, the, damn it. The we bay gift. The we bay gift. The, oh. Yeah. <laughs> God, he was so fucking fine. God, he was so hot. He was so fine. Fucking rapist creep, though. Ugh, made oh, me so character? mad. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, the actor, I don't know. I don't know anything yeah. about I, him. I got really worried for a second. I thought maybe you had seen an article or something no, about him. And no, no. I, I did not want it. I did not want Forgive it. Forgive me, actor, if you're listening. I did not mean to impinge your character. Although, maybe you are, in, in which case I did, but I <laughs> didn't really. Um. So, when he says that they're going through the bush... All of these uh, guards are like, we can't like tell him no. Nope. They sure so can't. So we're gonna start sharing lots of fucking like passive aggressive right? sub tweets and posts. Like somebody is like, let me get my book Goosebumps and just read aloud <laughs> from it. And then they just start reading scary fucking Goose Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> Bush is full of keys. They come running out. <laughs> Nothing's as scary that, as a that, goose. That is terrifying. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fucking geese fuck them every day, all day. I don't care For real. Listening. Fuck yep. geese. <laughs> or swans. Also fuck, swans. Fuck them too. Yep. Fucking aggressive, ornery, <laughs> unpleasant. Fucking just un- oh, I can't stand them. <laughs> you know, you know that uh, author that I've been quoting a lot on Facebook, PG Woodhouse. Mm. There's a whole like subplot where somebody gets stranded on an island, and there's like a boat to get off, but there's a nesting goose between or a nesting That's swan it. between him and the boat, You're and trapped. there's this whole thing <laughs> where like somebody sneaks up on it and throws his jacket over it and kind of like rolls it up and gets you know, all discombobulated and then chucks it, and they all have to like run to the thing, and it's shaking its way out of the jacket and chasing him into the boat. And uh, it is really something. It's a good bit. But yeah, swans are nothing to fuck with. They really are not. I think I've told this story before, but when I was working at the hotel in Charlotte, it had one of those, it sat on one of those man-made lakes. Uh, Mm -hmm. Charlotte was filled with those. And um, in order to get to the entrance, the employee entrance of the hotel, you would have to walk across the little lake. It was like a little wooden, you know, it's all very cute and picturesque. And there were shops and restaurants you know it was very very cute except that on the lake a swan couple and their Uh kids when they had kids lived and more geese than you could imagine and i would have it was like i had to run the gauntlet i would have to run across (laughs) that fucking bridge (laughs) and sometimes sometimes they would be aggressive enough that the geese would like chase you up the hill to the back door of the hotel it was fucking intense y'all but we weren't allowed to come into the front we had to come through the employee entrance so that was like how i had to get into work so you have to fight the geese every time i do you remember the- those white people who stood outside with their tiny little guns when people were protesting on their lawn that that like wealthy couple yes, i can't remember yes yeah i know exactly who you're that's what about, i'm though. picturing right now is these geese just being like out there with their little pistols and their Karen faces and being like, if you would like to pass, 
you had better be prepared because I am armed. <laughs> just like, the I just, oh, I, I'm passing by your property. Like, what are you doing? The geese are like, uh, do you live in this neighborhood? I don't feel like you look like you belong I, here. I don't think I've seen you here before. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I just don't feel like there's many of your type around oh, here. So I would move along. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick is right. They proved that birds are dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They fucking are. <laughs> Um, um, all right. So these stories they're telling and, uh, her and Sanji are just kind of like looking at each other and, um, they, there's this like plant that is apparently helpful to breaking the illusions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the Kiriwi. Someone had planted the fragrant herb across the border, hope, hoping to ward off evil. And there, the this is some is this the same plant that she tosses into the like lake later on yeah I f- okay that's and I, she, I was she, thinking she it was it, but... she rubs mm-hmm. it all over her body yeah yeah um <laughs> so <laughs> this this bit is like so alarming because it happens so fast no matter yeah. what happens stay together perhaps you should hold hands no need for that sanjeet said we'll be fine he tried to cross into the bush but i stopped him me first if i'm behind you how can you make sure i don't run off and she had hands (laughs) yeah and then all of a sudden this mask that she's got on this dust mask flies loose and flutters away and she starts chasing after it and i'm like rookie mistake Yep. You don't yep. chase the thing that mysteriously tumbled out of your hands at the exact moment. Somebody yanked that shit. It's a yep. dollar bill tied to a fishing line. Stop it. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I fell for that one time. <laughs> Did you? I have never had that perpetrated upon my person, but I would be very offended and indignant. I, I fell for that one time. It was very, very early though in cell phone technology so i don't think that anybody was videotaping it was like 2001 that's the main but, concern uh, these days yeah oh, it's so, not gonna but, be tiktok yep 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 and then it was really funny because i then after i realized what the gag was i never saw who was doing it mm-hmm. but i hung around to see how many other people would fall for it <laughs> you know what i'm not make myself i'm not gonna blame better. you at all for that yeah <laughs> That would be the um, sort of thing where I'd like hang around and just try and grab for the fishing line. Just <laughs> yank it off and, and run just, away. That's what I should have did. Suckers! <laughs> um, yeah, nah, I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, but so she, she falls for this fucking trick, goes after her little mask. The last thing mm-hmm. she hears is the captain yelling to warn her to stay by the plant. And, uh, she turns around and everyone is gone. Yeah. And she, all the warriors are gone. But then Jeet is there. And so she's like, oh, well, I guess it's okay. It's weird, but okay. Mm-hmm. And he just grabs her hand. He's speaking to her in that sweet way. We're going to be fine. We don't need the warriors, you know. She's like telling G, we we need to go back to where the plant was. Mm-hmm. We should probably get back on that path. And he's just like, that's fine. You're going to follow me. We're going this way. And they walk for a while. And she's feeling kind of like, are you, are you all right? Yeah. Are we going the right way? You seem weird. And it's just like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then he turns to her and says um, something really sweet, like, are you all right? And, like, touches her in a really sweet way, like, holds her head Mm -hmm. and is like, um, you know, I need you to keep up. I wouldn't want to lose you. Yeah. And now she's just like, what? Like, what? I was so (laughs) mad at how long it took her to catch on to this man. Like, come on. Come on, girl. Mm. Mm. And he starts humming this song. That she recognizes from her home. Yeah. She's just like, I didn't know you knew those songs. Again. Right? Again, girl. But come he, on. But he doesn't answer her and she doesn't press it. 
And then he starts trying to get her to go into this cave. Mm -hmm. We need to rest. Here's a cool cave that we should just go chill in. And finally, she's just like, "Mm." Mm -hmm. this is all suddenly very suspicious. And I was like, it was, it's been suspicious, man. Yes, it has. (laughs) Indeed. But, uh, and this is when uh, she says, he says to her, like, what happened wasn't your fault. You're nothing like the lady. Your mother forced you to hurt um, Dio. And she says, you know, but I am the lady's daughter and I chose to join the council. And that's when he's like, it wasn't your fault. And she realizes that this is not. I don't like it. Yeah, this is not what I thought it was. You're not who you say you are. And she just says, tells this thing to stop. You know? I don't like when you say this thing. I know that's what it is. I don't (laughs) like that. And well, even worse is this this line I thought was really upsetting. Uh, When she says, what are you? And it, it says, the person froze. Then he, it, smiled with Jeet's face. I did not care for that. <laughs> yeah, agree. <laughs> and Ugh. then it starts laughing. Well, actually, it it's laughing, but it feels like everything is laughing. She says the tree shook with laughter. Uh, yeah, like that was also super creepy. <laughs> that's like, that feels like a bad acid trip or something. That one really, yeah, when the, everything starts laughing, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then she tries to run away and feels a physical force holding her and then dragging her to the cave. So yeah. then so then now things have escalated. Like there was already it was already not great, but now she's conscious that this is not Sanji, that she's being tricked, that this is a male- malevolent spirit and as she tries to make a run for it, it is physically dragging her back, which mm-hmm. I feel like is unfair. Like, it's okay to trick me with your illusions, you know, and your pretty face. And as long as I'm willingly following you, that's my bad. But once I realize that this is not what I think it is and I'm ready to go, I should be able to go. I didn't care if it's for her. Look, <laughs> mental manipulation is one thing. Right? Physical manipulation is where I draw the line. It, it, it is absolutely where I draw the line. Because, you know, it. this is an entirely different thing now. And it is not only is it pulling against her and she is getting tired trying to fight against it and feeling herself give in. But it's still fucking talking to her. Mm-hmm. But it's not saying great shit. Now it's just like, you should give in. You'd be safer with us. You know, Dio would be safer. Don't be selfish, killer girl, it says. Mm-hmm. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your I pardon. Just, was, um, <laughs> I just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't care for it, any of this. And then she finally um, is She able- spots a Kariwi bush. And yeah. she starts going for that. And um, something else. It's a, a drum is echoing. The drum that's on her back that she carries. That's one thing she does bring right. with her is this drum. And um, the drum starts going. And she understands that the drum is giving her a message. So she knows to look. It's saying stone, stone, vine covered stone. And she's able to look and she sees it. She sees like this little area. And then there's another bush of that plant. And that's where she makes a a go for. And it's how she's able to escape this. But there's no Jeep. Why? Because he's caught up in his own illusion. That is even more involved (sighs) in hers. The worst. (laughs) Like his is a whole, like hers was just like two people in the woods. His is a is an elaborate thing, you know. Yeah. Um. Ugh, this was heartbreaking. <laughs> I love as she's like going and finding Sanji. These things keep following her, and at one point she's like, "Stop trying so hard." And I thought that was so great. She's just like, "Oh, wow, this is pathetic." <laughs> Oh, you guys I, are so desperate. Why are you so obsessed I, with me? I really did enjoy it. 
I really did. Um, you know, because she's so smart. Like, like mm-hmm. okay, granted, we've given her a little bit of shade because it took her like an hour to figure out what's going on with Chi. But once she gets something, she really does get it. Yeah. You know? Um, and I will... I will allow for how long it took her to understand that she wasn't really dealing with Sanji because I'm going to say the part of her that is so hurt and desperate for his forgiveness and for him to look at her because one of the things she says before they even get into the bush is that he hasn't looked at her in the eyes the whole time. Yeah. He's like staring at her, staring at the ground, staring at his feet, won't look her in the face. And she even says something like, I wish he would just look at me. I want to make him look at me. Mm -hmm. So then there he is all of a sudden looking at her, being gentle with her. And even though it makes zero sense, the part of our brain desperately wants a thing will often be like, all right, well, we want it so bad. Maybe I shouldn't look a (laughs) gift eye contact in the mouth. (laughs) I'm a writer too, guys. (laughs) Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, this god. is the elevated level of discourse you that can you can expect. expect. <laughs> so so yes, yeah, so she goes looking for him and she finds him in this uh camp that she can see is clearly an illusion. Yeah. Right? Like at one point she like peeks through and she can see it and then she steps back and it disappears and mm-hmm. it's just him. It's wild. Yeah, wow. later on, Captain Boonmi, the she's like surrounded by corpses. But when she turns and talks to them, it's mentioned that the corpses will like flicker mm-hmm. in and out. Mm-hmm. And I just really like the idea of like everybody else can tell this is fake as hell. Come yeah. on. Yeah. But for you, it's always it's intact so when you look, you know? You yeah. Know what too? And that's so, I don't know. I don't want to read too much into it because it's just like a really interesting idea on its face. It doesn't need like a lot of layers. But I like the idea of how we can be that way in real life. When yeah. we have something in our mind, you know, we could be so convinced of its truthfulness. And everyone around us is just like, girl, don't you see that like. Go to know, any Am I the Asshole post. Kind of. <laughs> you know, kind of. It's literally yeah. 2,000 people telling her, girl he's a psychopath leave and her Mm -hmm. going i don't know you don't know him Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah so like in in the bush there are like external factors that are tricking people's minds into seeing what it is they want to see but really if i say it again if i just remove the magic it's not (laughs) that different from what we can do to ourselves yeah you know um and how difficult it can be because she has difficulty convincing Jeet that this is not real. She has difficulty convincing the captain that what what she's seeing isn't real because, like you said, like you know, the person doesn't want to hear it, yeah. you know, because it feels and looks and smells and everything so real to them. They don't want to hear the outside person going, "Bitch, what?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. So, um, so yeah, so Sanji is in what looks to be like a camp that would be very similar to his hometown. Um, his little brother is there and they are like sparring and being playful and and the little brother is forgiving Sanji, uh, which we know. What does Taras like call it? God damn your guilt complex or something she said. <laughs> She is one to talk. I was oh, like, girl. She's like, you got a lot of Stop balls, it. ma'am. <laughs> but um, it takes her to, because like what she winds up saying that convinces him is just basically, yo, where's the logic? Mm-hmm. What do you think the likelihood is that they're camped here and yep. that he happens to be here and he's just waiting for you? Like, what do you, and I wish that she had pointed out that part sooner, but yeah. It takes a little while for her to get to the point where she's trying that angle. The one thing that she says that really, really gets through is she says to um, Sanji that uh, you told me your brother never lies. Right. And he's lying to you now. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Really stop and think about that. And that is because the brother is like, it's not your fault. I forgive you. You know, you didn't do anything wrong and all that kind of stuff. And 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 Tarasai is like, uh-uh, no. 
your brother would not deny that you abandoned him because you did abandon him. That is how that shit happened. Your brother would never be like, no, you didn't abandon me. And, uh, that's rough. Yeah, it's fucking hard. But it, it gets through and he stops for a second and she gets to, um, she puts her, her hands around his face, goes into his memories a little bit, mm-hmm. and then brings those memories up to, for Sanji. And yeah. it's connecting with those memories, those real memories, help him disconnect from this illusion. What I want to know is how <laughs> these little monsters fucking know what's in your head to prey on this i is, do not care for the fact is, this is the thing right That's yeah the thing. they know exactly i don't know i don't know if she will ever get into the magic of that i was willing to just chalk it up to like that's a bonus you get you know <laughs> like it sucks that you end up having to be like a spirit that tries to trap people but on the plus side you get this cool power to help you trap people <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i really would also been... dental <laughs> girl you know good those jobs those things need upkeep man <laughs> eating all those people wears mm-hmm. them down um so yeah so she gets them back and um when she does that she has some of the flour and she throws it into the pool and then things ramp up mm-hmm. because they are they are not a fan of this flower it changes the little pool that it looked like it had been into like it changes the color uh what was a pool ends up just being a giant bottomless pit <laughs> that they were trying to drag them down into don't love that <laughs> that really fucked me up because i know that the spirit isn't real but it did not occur to me that the lake wasn't real and mm. that he was trying to get him to just die. Yeah. Like, or, yeah. I mean, I guess it is die when you come down to it because you're going into like the underworld. So probably, but like, I, I'm still operating under the whole, oh, they're just trying to like lure you somewhere else. And this felt so much more like, <laughs> it felt like, Wiley Coyote painting a, a tunnel on the side of something for you to just drive right into it. You know what I mean? I was just like, wait, oh, it's like that. I wasn't ready for that. Okay. Note to self. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. And it doesn't exactly say, it just says, you know, a fathomless pit. And we don't understand exactly what that means, but it does not sound great. Doesn't. You know, like, yeah. is it is it a portal to the underworld or is it just like eventually you hit the bottom and you break every bone in your body and your soul is trapped there? Like, she doesn't really explain. Who can say? You know, so they fucking grab their shit and run and like make a run for it. Yeah. And after they get, you know, a little bit safe, he's surprised that she stayed. Because he's thinking, like, you could have gone back. You could have grabbed your shit. Because at some point, he drops the pouch. Because we should mention, she gives him the anklet. And she also gives him her seal, her ring seal. Which is what allows her access to the castle. Mm -hmm. Or any, like, Mm -hmm. important government building, probably. She gives that to him to hold as well. So when he's, like, sort of in this thrall... He has dropped the pouches. Mm-hmm. And I think there's even a moment where she notices that they're there. She does, yeah. Right? So when he comes back to his senses, he's like, shit, you could have grabbed that and went right back. Mm-hmm. And I would have just been in the fucking bush, lost forever. Yeah. Wouldn't have been able to stop you. Yeah, and- this is something that comes up later as well with Captain Boonmi. It's just like, you guys could have just left and nobody would have been mad at you for abandoning soldiers. Like, that's Loki, what we're for. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you didn't. So yeah. a lot of moments of like, you could have just bailed. Yeah. Thanks and, for not doing and her, that. And her choosing over and over again, we've seen her choose to save other people. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I love this bit too, because she, when he says the thing about being surprised that she didn't go back, she says, even monsters can surprise you. And he says, don't, don't call yourself that. Yeah. And she said, you did. 
And then he apologizes it. He apologizes. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate that, like, yeah, he apologizes and that means a lot, but it isn't like I'm going to just be, we're going to be like buds again now. Like right. we were. You right. Know? Right. So then this is when we talk, when she starts talking about, uh, what it felt like when she did it because he says you know the lady isn't you you didn't want to kill uh dio Mm -hmm. and she is just like well you know actually yeah you know it wasn't that i wanted to do it i felt numb when i did it but it also felt right like i was fixing a mistake that shouldn't have been made is what she says she says there was an anger in my blood that had to be satisfied which is uh upsetting. Mhm. Uh Yeah. It's like she has her mother's anger mm-hmm. without even really like knowing what it's about. Yep. And that is a very real feeling thing. Yep. Yep. It's and a he, he weird says to her, you inheriting need... anger. What, yeah, what li- why is that even like a listen, thing? I mean, it is such a thing. Mhm. It is such a thing. He says to her, you didn't choose to feel that way. And she says, does that matter? It's still me. And as like to what we were talking about earlier, like you may not have chosen to have that stuff put in you, but it is in you. Mm -hmm. And then when you act on it, you know, where is the line of responsibility? Like, when does it become less about what your parents did and more about what, you know, you're doing now, again, her situation is, because of magic, she's right. literally being compelled to do some things. Yeah. But, you know, in a real world, you know, circumstance, where is that line, you know? Do you <laughs> remember that um, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend song about how nobody has ever really done anything wrong? No. You don't remember that song? And it's like her trying to work through the feelings of guilt for her actions and she's being fed this line by Nathaniel, who is the perfect person for this to happen with, about how she can't be held responsible for the things that she's done because she's been so fucked up by her parents. And the whole song is about, like, nobody's ever really done anything wrong in their lives. And they sing about, eventually, it gets to, like, how you could kind of see Hitler's point. <laughs> The writer and performer is Jewish and absolutely would never, but the whole thing is just, there does come a point where it's right. just that you fucked up and yeah. you have got to own that. I need to rewatch that show. I think I'm due for a rewatch. It's so good. Mm-hmm. So good. Very um, underrated show. But yeah, that's the... Um, that's the thing. I saw that there was a weird post that was going around a while ago. I don't remember who shared it, and I commented. Somebody somewhere, it was like a public post that basically they were like, the new thing is, you know, the new thing with this new generation is all about blaming the parents for everything. Oh, I shared that. You My shared, bad. And mm-hmm. I was like, I commented even, it's not like we, they've been saying that. That's like the fundamentals the- of. The original psychology, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What do you mean the new thing for the new generation? It's always been, oh, you're going to go to therapy and blame everything on your mom? You know? Well, that was And it was so but- weird because the poster was like my age. So it was certainly a thing when she was a kid. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Boomer behavior so- from non-boomers. What's happening? Like, it's so disingenuous. She knew she was full of shit when she posted it. Whoever 100%. It People were just posting absolute garbage for clicks now. Or clout, as the kids say. Clout. It is wild, the nonsensical shit people will post and try to act like they really are saying something. Mm -hmm. Or that they even believe the bullshit they posted. They know in their heart that they're full of shit. And they just post it anyway. I do not understand it. I, I just don't. I don't get it. I have that thing going on with Facebook where they're like, if you have a certain number of followers, we'll start like paying you for engagement on your posts. And there's a part of me that was like, let me start to post some real fucking weird posturing shit to get engagement and see what happens. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't. 
It's nope. too goddamn much work it's to have work. the world out here believing that you think these stupid ass things. I'm exactly. not going to do it. No. Nope. No. No. Nope. No. Nope. And then like, I don't know. Well, actually, this is a conversation for not to be recorded. We'll talk about that later. Oh, oh. But uh, <laughs> no offense to you listeners. It just wouldn't be appropriate for the podcast. Um, but anyway, not that I don't trust y'all with it, but it just wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> You got um, everybody even more curious. Know, every right? well, every single disclaimer just makes it more enticing. Well, what can you say? I mean, you know. She's a real mystery woman. I am. <laughs> so, um, all right. So he is, uh, she's telling him about what it was like. Um, and she says to G, my mother is a part of me, just like your father is a part of you. It's not fair. We don't deserve the burdens our parents gave us. But we can't defeat monsters we won't face. Yep. And that's kind of the thing right there, isn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't care for it. (laughs) Thank you for this lesson, but also no thank you and I hate you. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's, and you know what? She, this is like so much of this is like the, this part is like, I, I keep saying take the magic away, but it's just. Because so much of it is so grounded in realism, you know, Mm -hmm, that I mm -hmm. can't help but keep thinking about it that way. Because uh, she's saying, look, I I tried to repress this shit. I tried (laughs) to burn it out of my brain. You saw me do that. Yep. You know? Yep. And here we are anyway, Mm -hmm. you know? And she says, if I had been honest with myself, I would have never joined the council. Which I don't know if that's true. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think she's taking on a little bit too much responsibility in this this bit. This one bit, I don't agree with her. Like, what was she supposed? Dio like picked her out. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that she could maybe have done was go ahead and eat that poison apple on purpose. Yeah, (laughs) and like that just feels like. Uh, I should have just killed myself. No, no. no. Okay. I can't, I can't get on board with that part now. Yeah. I mean, I guess, no, not even that because the, when she showed up at the council that first day, not the, 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 the grown up council, not the kids council. Right. They knew immediately who she was they and did. what she was. Mm-hmm. So it's not even like it was, I mean, I think it was a little bit of a secret from the kids. I don't think any of the kids knew anything. Yeah. But the adults knew. Yeah. You know, so that responsibility of her ending up on a council is not a hundred percent hers at all. Yeah. Agree. So I think she, I think in this moment when she says that she's carrying a little bit too much on her little shoulders. <laughs> But I know says, you meant that to be affectionate, but it did, did. sound very dismissive. Did it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> On her little shoulders. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what? And then he says to her, uh, and if you had, you know, if you hadn't joined the council, I would have stayed chained to that pillar. I would be the prince's bear with a rat skull as a token instead of a cowrie shell. Oh, sweet but, guys. And she says it it appeared like he might be taking my hand, but he does not. Again, even though it does break my heart, I'm glad it wasn't that easy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, all right, we have got to pick this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we only have forty five minutes left mm-hmm. and we have got a couple of chapters to mm-hmm. go. So they they rescue Boonmi, who has been tricked into thinking that she killed all of her own people. It's not what happened, but one of the other warriors was tricked into killing his yeah. own friend. Yeah. Which is truly a horrific thing. And it, it's like sticking with him. Yeah. To the is, point that she has to take the memory away. Yeah, so he can get some rest because he can't even, he can't even like sleep. He's just saying the name of the person over and over again. Um, It's so, it's so sad. So, and then they had, um... They spend the night at this um this little <laughs> this little inn. <laughs> um and uh the captain thanks them for res you know, coming back and res- rescuing them. The captain does it something weird. She says, um 
I'll never forget what you did, and neither will any of my comrades. The Imperial Guards will always be loyal to Terasai and Sanji. For the first time in many moons, I smile for the future. And yeah. Tundra is like, why you ain't been smiling? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong, boo boo? Like, Tell me. Like, what, what do you mean for the first time in a long time? And that is like a weird thing to say mm-hmm. without any additional context. And there's no time to get it. Like, you know, we don't get anything else from that. Just that that uh, that uh she's just like, huh, first time in many moons. Shit rang strangely in my ears is the way it's written. <laughs> um, so... This this moment with her saying that like she is loyal to the two of them and the feeling of like that things have been going in the wrong direction. Do you have any like guesses about that? Any feelings about significance on that? Well, at first I was thinking that this was a sort of reaction to that to the the edict that went out but she says for the first time in many moons which feels like a a lot longer period of time Mm. than just that that is you know declaration right so i am i'm wondering if something has been going on in the because the the imperial guard is like they're not just regular soldiers you know these are like palace guards you know they're Mm -hmm. all up in the mix so I'm wondering if they've been seeing things um, that we don't know about as readers just yet that have had them all being like, I don't know about what's going on hmm. here. But I have no idea what that could be. Um, I I don't know if... Um, I just don't know. Yeah. And it's also weird because we know that they have that that really awful tradition of sacrificing those children. And I don't know where the Imperial guards come from. I don't know if they're from all over the realm. Maybe there is, you know, maybe there is more dissent amongst the populace than I realize because I've only been talking to like very high level people so far, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. these are all very, very privileged people that I've met. Maybe the small folk, have a lot more issues than I'm even aware of just yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but I'm really curious. I was as curious as she was when, when she said that. She's like, mm, I don't know. Um, so then they go to their first lodestone and uh, somebody starts to be like, anointed on! Sanji's like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> and they are about to go through and the guy stops him and says, no, there's somebody coming. With a thunderous crack, a cohort of Imperial militia burst into view from thin air. No time to waste. We may have captured the abomination, but her servants still lurk in the Empire. They were last spotted not far from, and And then then he and them all run off. So I was thinking, uh, like, when the abomination, Mm -hmm. and the first thing I thought of was the lady, even though I don't, like, know if that's you know i feel like i've heard her referred to as an abomination before in some capacity but i couldn't put my finger on it Hmm. um i don't know if it was i don't remember exactly when it was but i felt like that felt familiar like when they were talking about yeah no i can't place it but that's who i thought of okay i thought like shit are they after her? Is she the kind of person that people can be after? Mm. You know, I I think of the lady as being almost magic herself to the point Ooh. where like she's not worried <laughs> you about mere no, mortals you know out here I mean? acting like you're going to catch her. Yeah. You know exactly. Like I kind of thought of her as being something beyond human. So, mm-hmm. but um, so that was what I thought. I don't. It could be something else, but the way it says uh. And her servants, so it's a her, mm-hmm. and it has, she has servants, and we know that at least Kathleen and Wuin are working for her, so she may have even more than that. And uh, they still lurk in the Empire. Now, that, that's the only thing that threw me off, is 
everything is the empire. This whole true realm that I've been exposed to is all the empire. So these militia make it sound like the abomination lurking in the empire is is unusual. Like usually it's somewhere else. Right. And that I have no answer for because I don't I don't know what else that could be. Mm-hmm. So okay, fair. Um. So they run off. The uh, oh, two of what, I I know we're running a short on time, but I, I don't believe the old man. <laughs> who well, knows? Now, what, who who knows what that was all about? Said the old man, smiling at us with nervous courtesy. <laughs> So you like, think he does know? I don't know. I don't trust him. When he <laughs> said, "When he says, who knows what all that was about?" I think he knows a little something about what it was about. Maybe okay. not everything, but a little something. Like this is not the first time you've seen these motherfuckers come bouncing through your area, chasing <laughs> something. You- <laughs> all right, noted. <laughs> um, so they travel through. And uh, they are told to go through to the accommodation in the center of the city. And this is when they come across people getting their griots taken away, all of this stuff. And then things being like piled up and burned. Yeah, this is this is no good. Yeah, this is no good. Unity edict is one of those things like um, put America first. (sighs) You know, it sounds fantastic. Who's against unity? What kind of monster doesn't want unity? You know? Yep. Ugh. But then you see that shit in practice, yo. And this is what it is. It's a bunch of burning of people's history. Yep. Burning of their stories. Burning of their religion. Their practices. Their What makes them them in order to force them to have to all adhere to this one central. Yep. You know, uh, I don't know. Religion, I guess, is fair. Dogma. Dogma. That's the word you right? want. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, eh, guys, I don't like reading fiction. It feels timely, especially when the world is garbage. But I have to say, you know, we're, we're, we're we have to say a, what? We're doing a lot of this shit right now. <laughs> We've been doing it. We continue to do it. We're, we're accelerating. And it is a, uh, absolutely wild that history people who don't learn history are condemned to repeat it and we're just like okay well yep Yep, bitch i might be (laughs) right (laughs) yes i'm just gonna be repeating just it's it's just it's so i can't believe i cannot even believe where we are i mean i believe it but i can't believe it Mm -hmm. but uh but but yeah it's it's always always done under the guise of some fucking shit that sounds like it's going to be great for everybody yep unity edict and uh she says i had known it would be forced so enforced so soon which uh it didn't sound like it was going to be rolled out this fast when they were having a conversation yeah a couple chapters ago but here we are and they are burning all their shit and the people are not happy about it Nope. And it's like, um, it's it's a little, I don't want to say they're rioting, but you know, it might be a little, a little unrest happening. (laughs) It's a, you know, riot-ish. You know, it's a, it's uprising. People's (laughs) rising. (laughs) And, um, she is crying watching the scene. Yeah. Um, and they are, uh, like some of them have to snatch the drums and the scrolls from the people because they're hanging on so tight. So they're like, you know, uh, it's just a terrible scene. The Imperial crier thanked each griot curtly and handed them new drums and crisp Imperial scrolls with just yeah. like, oh, this is, you know, don't worry about it. You're getting something yeah. just as good. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, well, they're taking their stories. Why are they taking their drums? And uh, Sanji has to remind her that the drums carry their own stories. Mm-hmm. Got to take them too. Yep. Um, so they find an inn and uh, they spend the night. And she is thinking to herself how Thaddeus had made the edict sound so reasonable mm-hmm. when he was explaining it to her. You know, the disunity had been terrible. 
You know, if the realms could put aside their differences and work together, fewer people would have died. You know, that all does yeah. sound great. And um, and she's just she's just thinking about it, and she's just like, that can't be right. <laughs> this can't be right. <laughs> I just like this is just so understandable. I I did for a little while um, that broadcast podcast, mm -hmm. which I would get on mic with a woman who named Karen Suhaku, who does a website called Bill Track Fifty. And um, we would find bills and and research them and then call our respective representatives about them, whether we supported or didn't support. And it was truly terrifying, mm -hmm. the titles of things. And then you would read them and the title was literally the opposite mm -hmm. of what was in the bill. Mm -hmm. And it would mm -hmm. be like something like protect the homeless Yep. And it would be like, so we're going to close seven or eight homeless shelters, you know, just shit like that, where you're like, but how are you allowed to just name it this? And that way, when somebody votes against the protect the homeless bill, you can, that'll be the headline. Mm -hmm. That'll be the headline. It's just yeah. truly so it's like children, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the bills that are out that are uh, the one that just passed in Tennessee, which is banning like drag performance. And then there's like 50 other bills on the books waiting to be signed all across the country. They all have names, you know, protect the children, mm. save the children, you know. Um. All right. All right. So let's keep it moving, though. Yeah. So she they are struggling with this and they're dressed as imperial soldiers. So at one point when they come across a family and are looking at them because one of them is singing there's a, a real reaction. They're like, we don't have anything. And you guys have checked us twice already. Go ahead and search yeah. our stuff yeah. if you don't believe us. And she's like, no, 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 no. But finally, she's just, um, we're going to buy all of the things you're selling. Everything. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the reason they're getting checked is, is once again, they're checking for these, this contraband, mm -hmm. these stories, these drums, you know. Uh, the, the, they're just roaming through towns, checking people, yep. you know, check stop. What do you call them? Checkpoints. Yeah. You know, Ugh. uh, but yeah, they meet this really adorable family that she ends up giving a bunch of gold to. Uh, there's also a, uh, we find out cause the wife is pregnant Yeah, and, uh, there's a little line about arguing kind of over what the name of this baby should be, who she thinks mm -hmm. is going to be a boy. And we find out that the the empire is encouraging people to not use their own traditional names and mm -hmm. use these these other sets of names yeah and so the father wants to use one of those names these names are also not great uh the, the father wants to use the name like overcomer or peacemaker and because they'll get a, like a stipend or a bonus mm -hmm. for using that name and the mother wants to use a more family like traditional name um, and so Terasai ends up giving her a little extra gold for the name. <laughs> yeah. Bopelo. Yeah. I, uh, I agree though. Like this is my son peacemaker. And I was like, I, I guess I do have to say though, Tari Sai's name meaning behold what is coming. Ooh. Every time I get That's chills. So good. I fucking love it so much. That it's so, so good. good. <laughs> um, so one of the, the lady too, she looks at her hair. God, and it's just like, so good. girl, this is tight as hell. Like, like doesn't this hurt? She's like, oh, that's how the fancy ladies wear their hair, cutting <laughs> off the air to their brains. I'm just like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> The fuck? Like, when she says, fuck. doesn't it hurt? Tari Sai says, only when I think about it. <laughs> Which I just, I really liked. Because, like, I, that's a real answer. I know what she means, but also it's kind of like, well, that my, does seem to be a problem. My mom was so, my mom used to braid my hair when I was a little girl. And she's really heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. uh, used to braid it so tight. it would My head would be throbbing. She would braid my hair on Sundays. My head would be throbbing until like Wednesday. Ugh. <laughs> it just was Ugh. Like so Your mom is real aggro, so that totally tracks that she would do it real tight like that. 
my mom is so fucking aggy for no reason. <laughs> well, no, she's got plenty of good reasons. They're just, you know, not healthy reasons. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I really enjoyed this bit, too. And um, they ask, um, she asked the wife about uh, Melu's pool. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, well, uh, it's really only one kind of person or one kind of thing that can help you. And that's going to be the sprites. And they, she tells them they have to find the old lady. Um, and that old lady, Ma- Mangue? How do you say That's what I think they say. Yeah, Mangue. Uh, they need to find her. Um, and they also are just like, and by the way, we're not going to ask you your real names. Uh, but I, I just want to say most Imperial water, uh, warriors probably don't have so much gold mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or such, such fancy accents. accents. Yeah. <laughs> love that. Um, look, we're not going to blow your spot up, but we, uh, we see you. Want you yeah. Right. <laughs> I want you to know that we know, and it just ends very nice. Like if you're ever in our village, you know, where we'll be around if you need us. Gives them some clothes, yeah, uh, and some jewelry, and uh, they head on up to this little this little shack with the most delightful old lady <laughs> that I have met in quite some time. This lady is goals. <laughs> Living by herself with the fairies, telling people to get in the fucking bathtub Basically, and shut up. Right? <laughs> She's making soap. She's got like a a whole cloak on her that's made of like leaves and shit. So she she. What is Terrace I say? I, I saw a mound. Wait, no. I, a green mound rested by a cook fire. Wait, no. Not a mound. A woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing a cloak woven from fresh leaves and rushes. A wizened arm stuck out from the cloak, stirring a pot of bubbling brown <laughs> slime. You've come on soap day, she complained. If you'd waited a week, I would have had solid bars. <laughs> I left a wash with mash. I love they're outside and she just yells, are you going to just stand there? (laughs) The sprite said you two would be late, but they didn't mention that you were dawdlers or dawdlers. How do you say that? Dawdlers. Dawdlers. Okay. Yeah. I felt weird when I said it, but, but I said, so yeah, she's, uh, she's already spicy and already like annoyed with them and and they just got here. (laughs) What's another, there's the word toddler. You can also say lollygagging. Mm-hmm. What's another one? There used to, there was one of my, my babysitter when I was growing up used to always say to me, she was an older woman. Probably like basical? No, that <laughs> means like being relaxed, but, but this is more just like, you're just dicking around and not mm. really like focused on your task. You know what I mean? Oh, this is going to drive me nuts now because dawdling is just like a, a probably a better, like more formal version of it. But I, lollygagging also has always felt weird to me because it has the word gagging in it. <laughs> and I always have been kind of like, is that really how that's used? But it is. Um, I'm looking for synonyms to see. Dilly dally. Dilly dally. That's what it was. She would uh. say, don't dilly dally. <laughs> and I remember as a kid, I never heard that. And I was like, don't talk to me like I'm a baby. I thought she was making words up. Like, you know, the way that people do with like kids. And I just thought she was just making up something instead of just saying, you know, mm. go straight there. She was like, don't dilly dally. And I was like, fucking stop it. <laughs> I'm 11 years old. I got your dilly dally right here. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, for dilly, some, you're dally. <laughs> for some reason, they decide it's Teresai, I think, who is like, Are you old Mangue? <laughs> and she says, No, I am Mangue, the newborn babe. Old Mangue is the other sprite covered earth shrine in the middle of the wilderness. I fucking love her. Oh. So yeah. What does she call her? Then after she says that, she you says tiresome child. Tiresome <laughs> child. That was it. Oh, that's great. It's good stuff. Um and 
I love this line so much. They said, how did, how could you know we were coming? How could I not know all day? They whine long way. There's a boy on the road talking, um, taking a magic cow to market long way. A dairy maid is running away to be with her true love. Long way. A Rola and her friend have come to seek an Aru. You're all the same young people full of questions and deaf to ugly answers. Hmm. Leaving your safe homes, your warm beds, because let me guess, you want to follow your heart. <laughs> she laughed a dry, wheezing sound. Then she turned back to her pot, stirring as she muttered, Should a fool follow his heart? A thief? A murderer? Your heart is not your friend unless you know who you truly are. And I love this. I love it too. Tari Sai says, thank, thank you for you. the tea. <laughs> that is so perfect. And I, I choose to believe that is intentional. I 100%, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's so good. And then she asked, um, what's a, 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 I don't know, Warula? War, let me see. I'm trying to look at it again because she said it. Uh, Wuraola. Um, because Rola, yeah, because uh, Tarasai understands that that specific example was about her, mm -hmm. and so she wants to know what does that mean. And um, the woman says, uh, "How should I know?" <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't answer her question. And she tells them that you're going to have a hard time convincing the sprites to take you. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, what did she say? Oh, it's Sanji who's just like, name me a price. We'll just pay whatever. Yeah. And she's just like, you don't fucking, you're not hearing what I'm trying to tell you right now. <laughs> so this is when Tari Sai goes in there. <laughs> and I love this so much. She like creeps in all calm and stuff. And they're basically like spinning around her like oh you want something oh what are you here for oh my god you're and she's just like okay okay jesus christ i get it they're just like mocking her straight up she's like i get it i'm a mess <laughs> <laughs> but uh she asked them you know help me find uh melu don't you want aristar to be safe i'm tired of being dangerous help me be normal mm -hmm. and she's trying and she they can barely hear her over the whining uh She's like, if I can break the lady's hold on me, then Melu will be free. Don't you care about him? It did not change anything. They don't nope. give a fuck about nothing she's saying. Uh, they just ignored her. And uh, she leaves and it's just like, it didn't work. We're going to have to find it another way. She goes back and she's so embarrassed because they've just been like, there is nothing as humbling as dealing with creatures that you're just like, I don't really know what tack to take here, mm -mm. whether that is very young children or in my case, the puppies. Right. <laughs> and you're just like, I really thought I knew what I was doing walking up in here. And I have been handed my I, hat yeah, and told yeah. to go and exactly. do my research. They were <laughs> 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 that is pretty much what happened. And then my way is like, hmm, back already. Cause she knew. Uh huh. She, no, right. <laughs> Uh, oh, did they care about the curse, huh? <laughs> she had her little ring camera and was watching the whole she thing really while she was, was stirring her soap. And Teresa is like, they don't care about anybody but themselves. <laughs> and then Mongwe just laughs at her fucking face and is like, of course they don't. <laughs> and then Teresa says, why did you let me try? <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> do you need it laid out? Come on. Come on, lady. Catch up. Catch up. First lesson of growing tall. People never listen to what you want. They listen to who you are. And then she says, the two tubes are chanting about you, girl. They say there's someone you are desperate not to hurt. And now Tara is like, yeah, that's right. Do they know how I can protect them? And my way's like, no, they think your whole case is hopeless for the most part. But then she points to Sanji. We'll help. The stone. Oh, the he gin, has. the gem that he's carrying. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, so it's the sunstone that she pulled and handed to him mm -hmm. that he has to like give back to her, which I kind of thought was interesting. 
that she like tries to give something away, but then it turns out to be like she, she shouldn't needs. have, you know, yeah. like she needs yeah. it. And so he gives her the sunstone back. And uh, she ends up taking the bath like she should have did from the fucking jump. And she has a wonderful bath where she is just uh, soaking and um, she does this thing with her hair. Mm -hmm. Right. She's trying to move so that she doesn't wet her hair. And she catches a glimpse of her shadow all twisted up in this fucked up pose where she, she suddenly is like, what the fuck am I? My yeah, scalp yeah. itches. I need to just dunk and mm -hmm. shut the hell up. And uh, yeah. yeah, she and goes she, and dunks. She remembers the, the braider. Shameful. Mm -hmm. Think of your title. Ladies reign every strand in place. And then she says, but what title would ever describe me? She fucking goes for it, dunks her whole head, washes her hair, and when she comes out, she just says, she just feels better. She says, my limbs felt oddly light, um, and thinks to herself, what title can contain me? She puts on the outfit that the family had given mm -hmm. her, and Sanji comes out, and he's in the outfit they gave him, and um, she goes back to the sprites and yep. she's just like you know what you don't have to help me but you're gonna fucking listen to me when i talk though mm -hmm. because there's no history i cannot see and she reaches down into the ground and just pulls all of their little stories out of them and it says i am terasai of swana and i've seen your stories now they belong to me as mine belong to you you don't have to help me change the world but mark my words, when I get going, this world will change. And you can stand back and watch, or you can be a part of it. And then they just fucking come for her in this giant swarm that's got Sanji watching like, oh, shit. <laughs> I love that. He's right? like, ah! <laughs> And she has to yell out. And, you know, it's fine. They aren't attacking me. And what they do is they lift her up off the ground. And they unbraid all that yarn and shit from her hair mm -hmm. to where her hair is just out and natural and, and uncontrolled. It's mm -hmm. just doing what it does. And uh, they set her back down waiting for orders because now she's in fucking charge. Yep. And then Magwe just says, didn't I tell you a bath would help? <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is a true life lesson, though. The number of times that I have just felt completely without hope or interest in life, and then I shower and I come out like, I got I, everything. I I'm all do, set. I can do whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come at me, bro. <laughs> I just had a bath. You don't know about me. <laughs> Fucking, I swear to God, though, bathing is such a ball breaker. Like, it's transformative. Yes, but at what cost? <laughs> at what cost? It's just so tiring. <laughs> you have to fucking dry off. Like, you got drying scrub. off. What a ripoff. You have to, like, at this age, I, like, I can no longer do, like, a lift a leg to wash my leg. Because mm -hmm. the balance and all that shit. Mm -hmm. So I have to bend over to do my legs now. Mm -hmm. Put one leg up on the side of the Ugh. tub and hold it hope, there. And hope and I don't die. Sort of mm -mm. topple. And then your foot slides around because nope. there's soap. I can't do the one yeah. leg up because of, because I don't have my glasses on. It's already a death trap. Mm -hmm. I can't see. It's soapy and slippery. It's all steamy. I am definitely going to die in the shower. So both feet planted firmly on the bottom of the tub. And I just lean over. And then to do the bottom of a foot. That's a separate situation. You got to get one of those like boot scrubbers that people leave by their doors and just put that in there so you just scratch your foot over the top of it. Ah, I'm, there about you go. To get me, I'm about to get one of those chairs that you can get installed in your shower. Ooh, no, I like that. That's good. I'm thinking about good it. Good for I, shaving too. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm at, of an age where I don't have to be embarrassed if I want a seat in my shower. <laughs> shower benches and whatnot. I remember when Cam was looking for a shower bench and they were hella expensive. I can't remember what it was that their uh, like requirements were, but they needed some particular type. And um, like you could get like 
you know, plastic ones and stuff. Mm-hmm. But for whatever mm-hmm. reason, they didn't want plastic and anything that wasn't, it was like a hundred bucks. Oh, wow. Just everything that makes life Ooh. easier is so expensive. I got, uh, I wonder if I have like a flex card for like medical stuff. Ooh. It's not like a, um, not the high, not the HSA, but it's just like a little card that you can put money on pre-tax, mm-hmm. right? But you can spend it on qualifying purchases. And some of the qualifying purchases are like durable medical supplies. So I there wonder maybe I could treat myself to a shower, bitch. Swear <laughs> to God, this is our life. This is our bougie life. Here we are, folks. Going to the medical supply store for a shower <laughs> bench is our exciting Sunday. <sighs> <laughs> but you know what? Mm. Like... It's not like that's not a great, like, you know what I mean? There's a part of me that can objectively stand back from this and be like, oh boy. But am I thrilled by it? Yes. Do you know what I just got? I got little silicon egg steamers for inside my instant pot. I'm so excited. Oh. I'm going to have these, like, what what, what am I? (laughs) Like, truly, what's happening? How is that? It's going to make your eggs in the instant pot? You make a, you, you. Crack the eggs, whisk them up with ingredients, pour them into these molds, and then put a little water into the bottom of the instant pot, and they steam in there like they're being, um, like a almost like a sous vide kind of texture, oh. so that it's really silky and very evenly cooked, and then they're like little egg bites that you can just uh, pop gotcha. in the microwave and smear on toast, and they're gotcha, really good. gotcha. Oh, okay. And you can also make like brownies that are super gooey or you can make um uh i saw one thing that was like mix up jiffy cornbread mix and chop up uh sausages or hot dogs or kielbasa and and pour the batter and stick a piece of the sausage in there and then bake it up and it's these little cornbread bites with like a sausage in the middle that sounds which good. sounds hella good i to love me. cornbread and jiffy I would... is unbeatable too i swear it to really, god it really, people talk a lot of shit but jiffy is really fucking good it is i have tried making my own like from scratch cornbread mm-hmm. and i don't like it as much as jiffy i just don't yeah they know what they're doing yep for nine for like what 65 cents a box exactly like what am i supposed to (laughs) get out of here um all right so that is the end of the chapter Mm -hmm. uh do you have anything that you want to mention before we wrap this up no i'm just really really enjoying this book i hope that the folks that are reading along with us are enjoying it as well um i think it's phenomenal i'm so excited to see where it goes and um we still got one more book to do but i'm just really loving everything about the series i haven't read anything like it before so this has been delightful i'm very glad to hear that and i oh you know what something that i wanted to mention i'm gonna say hi to new patrons in a moment but um jordan if waco on her instagram has posted that that uh world of eretzar will be returning so oh. evidently she is looking at, she's writing like a third one. She's like in the midst of it. Cool. I was thinking when I was reading this that like, I love this universe so much mm-hmm. that if she wanted to write a different story, but just pop it in this world, I would read the fuck out of that as well. Even if yeah. the, all the characters were different. Just it's as- a really rich world. It feels like there's so much potential to go in a million yeah. directions with yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, all patrons right. before we run out of time we're gonna say hi to the patrons all right this week we have got alexi feller alexi i know you we know you anna delorier i hope i said that right pauline maxi and abigail schnobrich welcome 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 guys welcome to all of you thank you all so much for becoming patrons um something i didn't get a chance to say last week but i wanted to and we just ran out of time is that i'm going to be putting the harry potter feed to private starting march 15th there's a whole announcement on the facebook page i posted in the um on the patreon and on the facebook patrons group instagram the discord i posted announcements everywhere with the full text and i also uh put a short episode up of on the um harry potter feed of me reading this thing but all basically what it comes down to is that i have been feeling really 
uncomfortable with having the show be public with so many things that have deeply changed with me and Rashawn about how we feel about the series. So um, I didn't want to completely get rid of it, but I just felt like people coming to it and seeing this so out of context without me being able to really like qualify anything before they listened. It was just not the way I wanted people to come to the show. So I'm going to be pulling it from public and I'm going to be creating a really easy to listen to feed with a private URL and a private RSS that you will get when you sign up to be a patron at five bucks. And um, everybody who uses that, you'll be able to access the whole show, including the rest of the reread that was patrons only in one feed, which will be a whole lot easier for everybody than it has been up till this point. Um, it's the kind of thing that's not as easy to, um, to keep secure behind a paywall, which is why I haven't done this with like every patrons only show make its own feed. There's a lot to it that would make that unfeasible for ongoing shows, but for something that's already complete, like Harry Potter, it's doable. And it was really the best compromise I could think up in terms of how to keep the show available but not have it be sort of uncontrolled and out in the world and uh also like put it in concentrated in one place because listening to it patreon is not super user-friendly like i think a lot of people get frustrated with it and i understand i wouldn't use it if there were better options but there aren't (laughs) this is what we've got so um so yeah, that is going to be happening again on March 15th. And uh, if you are wanting to get access, patreon.com slash unspoiled. And all of the folks who just signed up, you'll be getting a notification with the feed links and everything on the 15th. So stay tuned for that. And um, short thing also before we wrap, Crowdcast is upping its pricing <laughs> from $45 a month to 195 for less fewer sorry stannis features than what i currently have and thus i will be leaving crowdcast um it's a shame because i have so much on here and so many pre-scheduled things but it is I, there's just absolutely no way that i can pay that and also get fewer features than what i have been using so everybody keep an eye out for moving to probably YouTube is going to be like the only option that really works. And um, if you are having trouble clicking links that are were posted a little while back and they're not working anymore, forgive me, that's going to be why. And please keep an eye on all the feeds and stuff. I'll also try and send out an email blast with like the links to the YouTube um But we like Unspoiled's been posting to YouTube automatically from Spreaker for years. So we have a bunch of stuff on there, but none of it is organized into actual playlists or anything because that is a ton of work. And frankly, I have not been interested. Mm -hmm. Probably I need to start like looking at that, but I'm not excited about it. So uh, that's going to be a little while before it's organized in a way that's happier and friendlier. Yeah, if we're going to be spending time there, I guess you got to. Mm-hmm. clean the house up but like we're yep. never over there so just that's kinda... exactly it yeah it's always kind of felt like maybe some people listen to me on youtube that's weird yeah. but it's there i guess yeah it's always wild when i get like a comment from youtube because i forget that stuff posts there and it's always like I, i'm being unfair i was about to say it's always shitty i get at least five times as many shitty comments on youtube as on anything else Yep. Because it's just people accidentally finding my stuff and mostly not realizing it's a podcast and thinking we're just reading the chapters out loud. So then it's not an, a free audio book that is posted illegally. Mm. And they get mad at me because I talk too much <laughs> instead of just reading it to them. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you guys again so much for listening. We love you. And we will see you next week. Until then, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys.
an unspoiled network podcast.